Hi, it's Troy Griggs with Obsidian Wisdom. They answer the question, what are five things the rich never invest in? When it comes to creating a wealthy retirement, there is a mindset that you guys hear me speak of often, where it's going to help you to be able to build wealth. And you're going to want to recognize some of the patterns that the wealthiest amongst us have and some of the patterns that the poorest amongst us have. Today, we'll talk about five investments that the wealthy never engage in. And as a result, the poor almost always engage in them. So the first one is highly risky investments. There is a chance that everything we invest in will lose us money. There's a chance that everything we invest in will make us a ton of money. But there is a percentage likelihood of success that varies depending on what we invest in. So to drive this point home, if you were to go to Vegas and visit a casino, there are a variety of games you'll find in the casino. And amongst the highest probability of you being successful will be the table games like blackjack and poker and different games like that, where the tilt to the house or the tilt to the casino is maybe like 51, 52, 53%. Now, even though it's only a 51, 52% likelihood that the casino will win, if you play over a long period of time, if you lose 51% of the time, which is you lose the majority of the time, you will eventually go broke, right? That's just what it means. You don't actually need a very large advantage, which equally is true when it comes to making a lot of money. You don't need a significantly large advantage. You just need to be able to keep your money long enough to win in the long term. When it comes to going to the casino, a lot of people play things like the slot machine, which has the worst probability of you making money. The slot machine feels good. It gives us that little dopamine hit. And as a result, a lot of people will invest in those. And you'll find that that is a good proxy for life. When we invest in things that require little skill and a little effort, it's often going to be things that have a lower probability of success. If you were to play a table game like blackjack or poker, you'll find that those require a lot more skill than the slot machine, right? The slot machine, I could have my five-year-old go in there, but the rules of blackjack, when to hit, when to fold and different strategies that you can use and when they should be implemented, it means that we've increased the likelihood of us winning, but it requires a lot more skill and effort on our part. Because of the additional effort that is required for us to be able to win, a lot of people don't put the effort in to get the result they want. And as a result, we try to cut corners where we end up saying, if this is the easy way to make a lot of money, which is true, right? If you were to win in a slot machine, it can't get much easier than that. You stick the money in, you pull the lever, and then it tells you whether you win or lose. Now, the algorithm inside of it obviously chooses for us to lose the majority of the time, which makes it a highly risky investment. But it is true that you could possibly put $5 in and win $5,000. It's just not very likely to happen. When it comes to investing in highly risky investment, it's that same idea that if you go with an invested penny stocks, sure, a penny stock could go up to a dollar and that's like a thousand percent increase. So if you spent a thousand dollars and you would make a thousand percent off of that, well, you'd feel really good about that because you just found a very cheap stock that you could buy a large amount of, but you find the rich don't do that. They understand to take advantage of the benefits of compounding interest where our money grows and works for us. It requires you to not lose the money in the short term or the medium term, but it needs to be there for the long term so it can grow. As a result, they rarely engage in those very highly risky investments such as penny stocks or certain derivatives or, or even you find a lot of people talk about options nowadays. These are very highly risky investments. That sure, we can find someone out there that said, hey, I made $1,000 today. I made $5,000 in 20 minutes. But for every one of those that you can find, I can probably find 100 people that lost everything. Because that's just how it works when you're on a highly risky investment. So you find that the rich rarely do that. And that leads us very nicely to number two on our list, which is fads and hypes. Just things that get a lot of publicity where there's a few celebrities that have endorsed it. And because they said it was a great investment, even though we know they don't actually invest in it, we feel like we're missing out. We get a case of FOMO where we have found the SEC has been investigating different people where they've said, hey, this is a great stock you should buy. But they didn't disclose that they were a paid sponsor. They made it seem like they stumbled across the stock, just like you and I just kind of doing our own due diligence, looking for the best companies. And they were like, wow, I can't believe I found this amazing company. This is going to make me so much money. And then they, they document their journey where they'll say, hey, I, I put $100 in and I got 200 back today. And you will sit there and you'll say, oh, wow, wow that's amazing. They, they got 100% return this week. And then they'll, they'll go on next week and say, I put in another $100 and I got $300 this time. But they never tell us that they were a paid sponsor, probably receiving some sort of priority where maybe the stock performed that well. 
but it's very likely that they were just paid so that they could say that the stock performed that well. And as a result, these different fads, as they come and go, we can end up losing a lot of money in these situations, and the rich rarely will do that. They will perform the due diligence necessary, and you'll often hear Warren Buffett talk about it, where investing is like being a baseball player, where you could wait for your home run pitch. And even though there's a bunch of strikes and a bunch of balls, you can't strike out. You can only swing at the pitches that you want. So you can watch an infinite number of pitches come across the plate, and you get to decide which ones you want. When people speak to us from the, this is never going to happen again, that's not really a thing. There's always going to be another amazing company. Just from the times that I've been watching stocks where you can go from the dot com boom, where everybody was like, this is amazing. You have to jump in on this to where we start talking about cannabis. And everybody was like, wow, cannabis is going to change the world and it's going to be revolutionary. You got to invest in cannabis stocks to the metaverse when those stocks spiked because everybody said this is going to change the game. We're already doing things on video, so it's only a matter of time before we're all on VR with these Google Glasses, and it's going to pull up everybody's Google Pays and all this other stuff. And so they're like, well, these are the best metaverse stocks. So now we're in the AI boom where everybody's like, AI is changing the game. Everybody can invest in AI. These are going to be the companies leading the way. We should invest in these companies. The problem with fads and hype is these companies have not produced any of the returns yet that we believe they're going to produce. And at some point in time, those stocks are going to keep increasing to where it's baked into the cake. That's a very fancy way of saying if I was to look at NVIDIA right now, NVIDIA is believed to be one of those AI revolutionary stocks. And as a result, over the last 12 months, NVIDIA has gone up maybe like three, 400 percent. And because it's already gone up three to 400 percent in the span of the last 12 months, it would require the company just to be able to meet that amount to where I can then get the gains if I was to buy the stock today it would require a significant amount of growth that is very unlikely to happen. Now, granted, if you are someone who got in early and you're like, hey, I'm in there, NVIDIA is going to do this, they may or they may not. What may happen is the next time they do their earnings report, when everybody says that they should have figured everything out by now, and then they don't have everything figured out, or because the stock went up three to 400%, that would mean that it has to have a certain level of performance to be able to express that amount. I think NVIDIA is a trillion dollar company now which is kind of crazy if you just think about the list of trillion dollar companies and that NVIDIA is on there based on a lot of speculation. And as we already talked about with highly risky or speculative investments, there's nothing that has happened to justify the price that it's being sold at. And if you buy it at that price, then you are assuming that not only is it going to achieve all of the gold that everybody said it was going to happen, it would then need to increase and pass that for it to be able to continue growing for you to have this investment which can lead you into number three, which is pyramid schemes and scams. When it comes to pyramid schemes, the most common one you'll find is part of the schemes. And basically what those are is they offer you a high return with a little bit of risk. You often will hear me say that if there's a certain return that we're going to achieve, I will then talk about the certain range that those stocks can perform in, where we talk about the volatility and maybe the time that it performs best and what the average is over a long period of time. And we always talk about the risk of an investment. If you find yourself investing in something that says, hey, this is going to get you a 50% return. There's no chance of you losing your money. It's very little risk. You may get 50% and you may only get 45%, but you will never lose money. At the worst, you're just going to gain 10%. Those are going to be Ponzi schemes. And the way Ponzi schemes work and the reason they can be so effective is they get a lot of referrals because the first people invested are getting the returns that they said they're going to get. So for example, if someone wants to open up a fund and they said every time someone invested $1,000 in, they would get $2,000 back within 30 days. So most people would say that doesn't sound very reasonable and they would be very skeptical and they'd be right to be. But there would be a handful of people who would go and try it where they either weren't concerned about losing $1,000 and they thought the opportunity to figure out if this would work was the risk that they're willing to take or whether someone was in a rock and a hard place and they really felt like they needed to make a ton of money to be able to make their ends meet. For whatever reason, there may be five or 10 people who would put that thousand dollars inside of that Ponzi scheme. And then what would happen is those first 10 people would be given back $2,000 every time they invested a thousand dollars within 30 days. And as a result, what would you do if you're one of those 10 people? You would tell everybody you knew. You'd call your parents, you'd call your friends, you'd call, tell everybody in the church, you would tell everybody I put the $1,000 in and I got $2,000 back. 
I'm going to give them $2,000 so I can get $4,000 back. And then everybody would be like, really? And you're like, yeah, look at my check. It happened. And then they would look at your check and be like, yeah, it looks like that, that really worked. Okay. If that's what happens, I'm going to put a thousand dollars in so I can get $2,000 back. Now, what most people don't know and why the Ponzi scheme is so effective is all of this buzz that's built around this fund. People are taking the money and they're investing in it. And the person running the Ponzi scheme is just taking out the money that's being given to them and they're giving it back to the people so that they can keep this word of mouth going. And at some point, there's too many people investing in the fund to where they can't continue to give people this outrageous return that has no risk and it consistently keeps happening where every time you put a thousand dollars in, you get $2,000 back. And then what will happen is now their referrals are drying up and now people are saying the opposite. People are saying, I put a thousand dollars in, but I didn't get anything back. And they're not picking up when I call them. So then a handful of people are going to start pulling their money out, which obviously makes the part of the scheme collapse. The pyramid scheme starts collapsing because they couldn't maintain it because of the number of people that they had and the amount of money being invested in. But as more and more people find out that they're not getting their money back, then it becomes a mad dash to get your money out and then it just collapses. And whoever's left holding the bag is left holding the bag. Most sophisticated investors understand there's a level of risk associated with getting a high return. And that is why everybody can't invest in hedge funds. Everybody can't invest in alternative assets and everybody shouldn't invest in them either because you have to have a certain level of understanding of the stock market, of these investments, of the risks that you are getting into. But if you don't have this level of sophistication where you don't understand whether someone's blowing smoke up your butt or whether the, this really is a good opportunity, we can get taken advantage of. And so that is what ends up happening with the Ponzi scheme. And it doesn't mean that the sophisticated investors are immune to this because everybody can get caught up in greed and make a decision that goes against their better judgment, where it does sound a little bit too good to be true. And it really was. A common type of scam that you'll find here on YouTube and in social media in general is what we call the pump and dump, where someone will make a video and they will say, this stock is an amazing stock. Everybody should buy it. It's going to have a jump and it's going to be amazing. I'm going to hold this stock for five years. This is a fantastic long-term investment. And then everybody that follows their channel, they watch the video. So they get the money from the video being watched. And then their audience goes and buys the stock. So the company does get a little bit of a bump. But what they didn't know is the person they're following sold it at the height of that. So they rode the wave with you and then they sold right there and everybody else did too. And then it went back down. And again, it's one of those where someone is left holding the bag where we're all told this was an amazing investment. Cryptocurrency is one of those where you'll find people that are out there talking about cryptocurrency and how amazing it is. But most people aren't very comfortable holding cryptocurrency for the long term because it's so volatile, because it's so hard to figure out. And it ends up being a very large gamble. And it's not to say that the rich don't gamble. They just don't invest when they're gambling. They're gambling as they're gambling. Where Michael Jordan is well known as a gambler, where Charles Barkley is well known as a gambler, where I think Tiger Woods, but I definitely know Shaquille O'Neal, where there's lots of athletes and wealthy people who do gamble. To them, it's no different than us going to the movie where it's an experience. It's just something fun that they're doing. But if you're participating in these pumps and dumps and your intention is to retire off of them, that's not the same as someone who's gambling using their fund money. That is someone who's trying to retire off of this and they're using their investment funds. Your investment funds should not be your gambling funds. If you were to go to Vegas and, and have some fun and play random games, or if you were to go to a golf course and, and golf and have fun with your friends, these are leisure buckets of money. This is not something you expect to get back. You don't expect to return. It's nice if something happens, right? You become a professional golf or something. That's a nice, but you didn't expect that to happen. Oftentimes people are in the action of gambling while they're looking for investment returns and consistency, but you shouldn't mix both of them. And that leads us into number four, which is just being an unregulated market. If you're worried about being taken advantage of or being scammed, then you will find that the worst of the worst are going to be an unregulated market. So for example, you find me as I talk about the stock market, I have to have a series 65 to be a registered investment advisor. That's what Obsidian Wisdom is. And I am a representative of Obsidian Wisdom. So that makes me an investment advisor representative. As a result, there are certain rules that I have to follow. If I mess up, you could file a complaint with me in the state of Florida. There are certain opportunities that you have to recoup your money. And because of that, you find that there's a lot of scammers who aren't as interested in this arena because the SEC would come knocking on their door. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't find scammers in this industry because there, there are. But it does mean that once they get a high enough profile that the SEC may send them a cease and desist letter, the SEC may bring them to court and sue them. They may freeze their assets. There are certain things that the government will do. 
But if you're in an unregulated space, and I find that a lot of people will give you advice about credit repair. Okay, well, credit repair is an unregulated space. You'll find that people will give advice about Forex trading. And, and again, that is a, an unregulated space because we're, we're in different countries and, and there's certain emerging markets and different scenarios that makes it a little bit harder for us to be able to regulate that in any one particular country. So you find that when people are in these unregulated spaces, they make the most outrageous claims of success where they say they have a strategy that will get you a 15, 20, 30% return every single week like clockwork. You can't make those claims. Well, at least you can't make those claims without consequences if you're in a regulated field such as myself. But if you're in an unregulated field, then people do say all sorts of crazy things. And then we do invest and we think it's going to work out and it just doesn't work out because there was no accountability for them. I think all of us need accountability. I used to tell my students that as wonderful of a person as I am, the reason I don't speed is because I know I can get a speeding ticket. And as a result, I end up driving the speed limit. But if I knew there was no opportunity of me getting a speeding ticket, would I speed? Well, yes, I would speed. Would I speed a crazy amount? Well, well no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't speed you know, 100, 150 miles an hour, right? I'm a family man with four kids, but I would drive faster than the speed limit. But because there is accountability, I know that I'm going to make the decision that is best for me. And the best decision for me to make sure I get from where I want to to where I need to is going to be to drive the speed limit because I don't want to get pulled over and risk being late. I definitely don't want to pay the state of Florida any more than I already have to. And so I end up making the decision that's best for me. Without accountability, what's in the best interest of someone may not be in the best interest for everyone. So the rich aren't very interested in investing in unregulated industries because it opens them up to fraud, opens them up to being taken advantage of. They can't perform the due diligence and they don't have recourse to get their money back if something was to happen. By investing in regulated industries with the governments that allow you to, to go to court to get your money back, to be able to read certain data to make sure it's a good investment, because at the end of the day, we can only make the best decision that we can with the information that we have. And the less information that you have, the harder it's going to be for you to make the right decision. And so the rich are going to be focused on long-term success. So they usually avoid these unregulated industries. Our fifth and final investment that the wealthy will not engage in is industries that have a lack of transparency. For example, if we were an accredited investor and we wanted to invest in a hedge fund, we would want them to share their investment strategy with us. Now, they won't give us all the nuts and bolts of it, but they should be able to let us know what it is that they're going to accomplish, what industries they invest in, what their overall philosophy is. And we should be able to hold them accountable to that. If they do not share the information that we need to make an informed decision, then we should not invest in those funds. All fund managers should have some sort of investment philosophy that they're willing to share with you. Even if they are a quant that has some sort of an algorithm that helps them decide how to initiate the investments, they're not going to give you the exacts of the formula. And I get that because it's worth millions of dollars and they probably spent years putting it together, but they should still let you know what types of stocks we're trying to invest in. Are we looking for stocks with high earnings or are we looking for stocks with high cash flows? Do we want companies that have been around for a while and have a certain amount of market share? Do we want them to have a moat, which just means they have some sort of a competitive advantage? Is there a certain profit margin that we look for in the companies? They should be able to share that overall strategy with you. Just knowing the types of stocks and the criteria and the industries that they're searching for, it will then give you the information that you need. If I had to sum up the five types of investments that the rich should not engage in so that you can make sure that you become rich in your investments, they invest in regulated funds that they can understand. They're looking for long-term investments, not short-term fads, which gives them the ability to be protected from some of these scams and Ponzi schemes. They want to be able to research the company so that they can understand the details of how the company is going to be run. And they often have a team of professionals that they use to vet the company, whether it's the due diligence of looking at all the financials of the company or whether they want to be able to talk to the management team to see what their vision is for the company. They spend a lot of time getting to understand this investment because the more information that we have, the better likelihood we have of success. I'll probably do another video where I will show you how important having the right information is to your investment where you can see that there's people in Congress who are on certain oversight committees that make investments based off of that private information that they have. You and I would be arrested for insider trading, but Congress, because it's their job to regulate these industries, they tend to use that information to make investments that make them millions of dollars. And all it shows you is that if you have the right information, you can and will be very successful in your investment. If you're speculating and taking a lot of risk, then it's probably not going to work out for you in the long run. Think of it just like the slot machine. Sure, we can go and we can say, well, every day someone wins at the slot machine. That's a true statement. 
But it's equally true to say that upwards of 75% of people who engage in the slot machine lose all of their money. I want to thank you always for the time that you give me. If you found value in this video, I simply ask for you to like and subscribe so you can continue receiving valuable insights on how to stop worrying and start living. Until next time, stay safe and enjoy life.